Tomorrow marks 40 years since two skywalks fell inside the then Hyatt Regency Hotel in Crown Center right here in Kansas City, killing 114 people. You know, that collapse in Florida, a sad reminder that these things can still happen. But as anchor Taylor Hemnes reports, there are systems in place today because of the Hyatt collapse that are meant to prevent them. I feel like it was not just the engineers, it was the inspection process and people who had an inkling that it might not be safe. Sally Firestone could have a lot of anger for an engineering failure that put her in a wheelchair. She doesn't. I don't feel like it's just one person or two people, but again, we need to take the message away that more needs to be done. Investigations into the disaster pinpointed a change in design as the reason for the collapse. Originally, the skywalks were both to be suspended by one long rod stretching from the ceiling through the fourth floor skywalk and into the second floor skywalk. During construction, engineers changed that plan using one rod from the ceiling to the upper walk and then another rod to suspend the lower walk from that upper walk. The box beam was failing from the weight of the 72 ton walkways from the date they were built. Bill Quatman serves on the board of the Skywalk Memorial Foundation. He had just graduated from the KU School of Architecture when those skywalks fell. Everybody was looking for the, for the cause right away. He told me that perhaps the most striking thing about the collapse is how many times the mistake could have been caught. Evidence showed that the architects asked the engineers multiple times, did you check all the details? And they were assured every time that we checked it. And a workman noticed it when he was working on the walkways, but he said, you know, I know all steel deflects, but I don't know, I'm not an engineer. So he covered it up with sheetrock, drywall, and didn't report it to anybody. The engineers said, well, it's somebody else's job to check it, not mine. And the conjurer said, no, we thought you checked it. And it turned out nobody checked it. Today, because of lessons learned in Kansas City, it's much less likely for that to happen. A third party engineer has to go in and inspect all the steel connections in a project that's under construction. Not the design engineer, but a third party engineer. And that's in the building codes now nationwide, really from this event. And we still had a failure. Bob Berkebile, architect of the hotel, still helps design buildings. But he told me his mindset, even his purpose, changed forever because of that failure. The question that still sticks with me today primarily is what is the unintended consequences of our designs? Even with the best intentions and the best guidelines, horrible things can happen. So it requires all of us to be at our best all the time if we have any concern about public safety and the well-being of our community well into the future. Building codes aren't the only thing changed by the skywalk collapse. Well, you got to have a plan. Dr. Joe Weckerly was the leader of the medical effort that night and spent hours trying to save lives. He says disaster response today is different because of this tragedy. All disaster responses are local. You will not get help. You will not get aid. You will not get the federal government or the state government in there in time to change that first critical period. If you don't plan, it will be a disaster further. Today, the Skywalk Memorial sits not far from the hotel. When you visit, notice the details, the names, the sculpture portraying a dancing couple, and the rippling circles signifying the impact this tragedy should still have today. Taylor Hymnus, 41 Action News.